Sinjurin, selmilkom nil-akom għal-edizzjoni uħra ta' flusek. Fil-program ta' l-lum, sar n-kunu għet n-diskutu r-rizultati finanzjarja du kif ħabbar il-Bank of Valletta PLC għal-lew el-sitxuri ta' s-sena. Il-mistiden ta' għana uħa Mr. Rick Hankin, il-kap ezekutif ta' l-Bank of Valletta. Mr. Hankin, welcome to Flusec. Thank you. I was just telling the viewers that we'll be discussing the results, the financial results of Bank of Valletta. But before we, we start um, discussing these results, uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about yourself so that the viewers, because it's your first appearance on Flusec. <laughs> it, it, it is, and thank you. Um, well, I'm a career banker. I, I went into banking straight from school. I've worked in banking all of my life. I've worked in a number of different locations, so obviously UK mainly, but I've worked in Australia, New Zealand uh, and Asia. Uh, personally, I'm a family man and I enjoy sports, particularly rugby. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, Bank of Valletta has just announced a profit before tax of 13.8 million, a decrease of 75% from uh, last year's comparative. Um, what led to this drastic decrease in, in profits? So primarily it's, um, as we've all been impacted, it's COVID related. Mm -hmm. uh, so 25 million of the drop in profits was um, either directly or indirectly attribut attributable to uh, the, the COVID situation. Uh, it's impacted um, uh, our business through the door levels. Uh, it's impacted our, our credit losses because although we haven't suffered losses, mm -hmm. what we've done is provided for future events to make sure that we're, um, we're well protected. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of it is down to COVID. Um, there are other issues as well in terms of we are investing, which is increasing our costs. Okay. Uh, and market interest rates have brought down uh, a margin. So we're seeing a, a, a smaller, lower level of return on the investments that we as a bank make. Okay. Um, as you have stated, the COVID-19 pandemic has had um, an impact on, on your financial results. Um, to what extent did the impact um, uh, affect the results and how did the bank deal with COVID-19 in general? Um, so the results have been impacted because we closed our branches for some, uh, for some mm. weeks uh, or had very, very limited activity in, uh, in a number of branches. Uh, so normal business levels have been much lower. Okay. Um, we've also uh, seen things like tourists uh, not coming over, so we've seen much mm -hmm. lower exchange um, uh, income. Businesses not transacting as much, so we haven't seen as much foreign payments or, or, or turnover. And the commissions we earn on, earn on card payments, for example, were 40% down on normal mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. So um, from a business impact, it, it's been that new business level, lower commissions, lower uh, uh, um, trading uh, income, uh, but also then we've got um, credit uh, uh, position. Okay. So uh, many customers we've supported through the Malta Development Bank scheme, and we've been able to uh, provide loans and facilities to keep um, uh, those businesses going, and also moratoria or, or uh, relief on payments for many of our personal customers mm. uh, uh, as well. But what banks do is they provide for future losses. So given the uncertainty in the current world, we've increased our provision for losses by 10 million. Uh, and, and this has also impacted um, the, the mm -hmm. trading position relative mm -hmm. to last year. Net interest income, uh, the main driver of revenue, has decreased. Um, what has led to this decrease besides COVID-19? So um, fundamentally within uh, the business, the uh, interest rates in the whole European marketplace are at a, uh, an all-time low. Um, and we have a balance sheet that has 12 billion of our customers' deposits with us. Um, and we only lend to customers 4 billion, which means we have a big surplus of investments that the bank then has to make. So mm -hmm. the bank invests that money with either the central banks uh, or in mm -hmm. bonds mm -hmm. or other markets. But the bonds and the market interest rates have come down so low that the return we have been getting on our investment is significantly lower. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, for example, we have to put three or four billion on deposit with the European central banks or, or the central bank here in Malta and we get negative interest mm -hmm. rates mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. And that has been growing, and these lower interest rates and the negative interest rates we pay when we invest money have really hit our, our mm -hmm. net interest margin. 
commissions and trading profits have also fallen substantially. Um, what are the main reasons for this? Yeah, so as I kind of alluded yeah. to, Nikki, it was the, um, the the lack of tourism, the lower levels of corporate trade internationally. Mm -hmm. So certainly international payments and foreign exchange levels have, have reduced. But additionally, we've been de-risking, uh, mm -hmm. as has been mm -hmm. talked mm -hmm. about in, in, in the press in, in recent months. Uh, and what the, this means is, is that we have tried to make sure we are doing business with those who have a clear nexus with Malta, um, and a number of businesses where it was very difficult for us to maintain a relationship either because we couldn't get the necessary information or they were perhaps trading in higher risk jurisdictions. Um, we've been retrenching from some aspects of international mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. So we knowingly have pulled back from certain areas and that has reduced some of our, f our foreign payment income. But as I say, also just simple things like the volume of customers using credit cards or debit cards uh, and certainly uh, foreign tourists coming over, um, that's impacted our credit card commission by 40% at the, at the peak. Mm. Now what I would say is we're starting to see that come back uh, and if we uh, touch wood uh, come out the other side without a second wave on COVID, yeah. we would hope to, uh, to see a good steady recovery coming through. You referred to the COVID assist scheme. Maybe you can elaborate a bit further on that. Yes, of course. Um, so the Malta Development Bank worked uh, very quickly uh, to come up with some support schemes for um, uh, businesses uh, here in Malta and uh, were very quick to um, give a, a very good solution um, uh, for government uh, uh, support to these businesses. Mm -hmm. um, in uh, BOV, we moved quickly. We were the first bank uh, to sign up for the scheme and we've helped over 3,000 customers with uh, some 200 million of loans uh, that we've uh, a, a, a agreed mm -hmm. to support businesses uh, and this scheme continues uh, and we continue to work with customers uh, who uh, are feeling the effects of uh, the prolonged Covid mm. period. While the income of the bank fell costs have increased by 8.2 million. What has led to this increase in the costs? So there are a couple of drivers behind the increased uh, costs. Firstly, we've been investing a lot more in uh, making sure we have a sustainable bank for the long term with uh, effective uh, risk management and governance controls. So we've invested in new people into uh, particularly the risk and compliance areas. Um, but also we've invested in new systems. So we replaced our core banking system uh, that was rather outdated. Um, and we successfully migrated to a whole new banking platform mm -hmm. over the um, New Year period 19 to, uh, to 20. Um, that uh, investment was uh, significant because it creates a platform mm -hmm. for us to develop new digital capabilities going forward. But the investment we've made in the new system, we now have to start providing uh, a, an annual depreciation cost and that's uh, increased our IT mm -hmm. costs um, mm -hmm. uh, as we've moved into the new system. So investment in uh, new people and investment in systems is what's particularly driven what's up, up our cost mm -hmm. base. Mm -hmm. The net impairment charge is up considerably as well. This is mm -hmm. to be expected in the current environment. Um, but how did the bank arrive at the figure of 7.4 million? So uh, this is a net figure um, and uh, under the uh, counting regulations there's something called IFRS 9 which mm -hmm. um, drives the way in which we have to make provisions but what we've done is there is a model that calculates the predicted losses in the future and what we've done is taken uh, the, Malta, uh, the Central Bank of Malta um, economic forecasts that has uh, unemployment, GDP and, mm -hmm. and, and, and so on and we've applied the worst case into our models. And what that does is drive up a higher level of predicted future losses okay. that we make mm -hmm. a provision for today. In doing that and some other prudent steps, that increased our provisions by 10 million euros. So we've got quite a substantial uh, level of buffer in the event mm. that we start to see companies struggle further under the uh, COVID environment. But Net of that, we have been uh, focused on some uh, long outstanding uh, debt positions and we saw some good recoveries from historic debts that had previously been written mm -hmm. off uh, and we've recovered to bring it back down to the net 7.4. Okay. 
loans and advances to customers have increased slightly, um, which indicates that you are still open for business. How are you assisting your customers during these difficult times? Um, so we've already talked about the uh, MDB uh, uh, scheme. Uh, we've been working very closely with all of our, uh, our customers. Um, those who have uh, no income, so certainly hotels would, would be a good example. Their income has dried up mm -hmm. uh, and their normal uh, pattern of trading has been seriously impacted. So we've been working alongside businesses um, who've been feeling this effect um, looking at um, how we can provide either moratoria so they don't have to pay existing mm -hmm. loans mm -hmm. or new loans and with payment holidays to help them through these periods but always working with them to make sure that when uh, we are in a post-COVID world uh, that customers can afford the new levels of debt that they've, uh, they've got right. to sustain. Mm -hmm. On the personal side, we, we've helped thousands of customers who uh, have asked for a payment holiday on their uh, on their home loans, um, and we, we've uh, you know made sig significant um, uh, uh, support arrangements via our branches directly with customers through our um, call centres mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, our people are able to cope as best they can in difficult mm -hmm. circumstances. Can you give us some information about the bank's current uh, pending litigations? Yeah, uh, yeah, so th historically there were three um, mm. um, uh, key litigations. I mean, obviously we have a number of smaller ongoing litigations, but there were three key ones. One was the Valletta Property Fund, uh, which the courts um, settled with us, wh was found mm. in our favour uh, late last year, so that one has gone away, which left two uh, key um, uh, cases against us. Uh, the first one is uh, the Swedish Pensions Agency, um, who have a claim against us and I've been working very closely with them directly and uh, with lawyers and we've entered a mediation process and I hope very shortly to be able to announce that we've settled uh, on a satisfactory basis with, uh, with the pensions mm -hmm. agency in Sweden. On the Julemar case there's been some recent press. Uh, our position here is quite simple. We have very strong legal advice from a, uh, an independent um, leading uh, um, information source in Italy that this case has no merits. Um, and we continue um, with that, that view, nothing has changed. But given the unique circumstances mm -hmm. of the case, the fact it is so protracted and that the bank is uh, in, in, uh, you know, uh, uh, feeling the effect of costs of yeah. running the litigation and, and mm -hmm. lawyers and, and, and so on. Um, we decided some time ago that we would um, try and come to an agreement with um, the Julemar case, uh, the curators of the Julemar uh, situation, to see if we could reach a practical, pragmatic, out-of-court solution. There has been no change in our view that the case has no merits. Mm -hmm. We have made a sensible, practical offer to try and reach a conclusion. I remain hopeful that we will be able to work out mm. a practical um, uh, solution uh, in this case and we're working, working hard on that. Great. Shareholders of the bank um, are obviously concerned with, with um, the results, especially in view that no dividends will be paid. Um, how are you looking at the future of the bank, both from the revenue side as well as from the cost side? So um, we just developed a new um, uh, strategy, um, but there, there are three things dragging back um, the bank's sustainable uh, uh, profitability, really. The first is the uh, cases that we've uh, just discussed, uh, and I'm hopeful that we can resolve those so that that uncertainty around a, a contingent liability I I is removed. Um, in some ways, that can place uh, a, a, a strain on us from a capital perspective because we need to make sure that um, any uh, eventuality is covered. Now, we think we have more than sufficient provisions in that, mm. uh, and mm. once we can finally close those two cases off, um, then I think that will give a lot more certainty uh, and remove uncertainty in relation mm. to our future uh, profitability. So that, that, that's the first uh, key thing. Uh, the second is we've been going through a programme of making sure the bank is strong from a risk perspective, resilient, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, meets all regulatory requirements uh, and is fit for the future. Um, and th this stability uh, programme we've been running through, um, we're continuing in this year, but we've made excellent progress. And I would see that coming to, towards a close, towards the back end of, uh, uh, of this year. On the income and cost side, 
Um, we, um, it's not a cost issue for us because we think we can invest in the right spaces. Okay. Mm -hmm. But once we've simplified and uh, improved our, our processes, got through some of the issues we've been facing, uh, and have now the technological uh, capability to, to move forward, then I can see our revenue streams uh, returning, and certainly post-COVID returning to, mm -hmm. uh, to good levels. Great. Um, in your announcement, you have made reference to a fresh strategic plan that will transform Bank of Valletta into a more efficient, more digital and more customer-oriented bank. Can you give us some insight into this new strategy you mentioned? Uh, yes, of course. Thank you. Um, it it kind of pulls together a few of the strands we've been uh, yeah. discussing in our, our time here. But um, we invested in a new core banking platform because our old one was out of date and, and mm -hmm. uh, didn't enable us to have the sort of connectivity we need to make digital changes. So the new platform that we successfully migrated to in uh, December, January, uh, at the turn of the year, gives us excellent opportunities to develop new straight through processing, automation, simpler processes for our customers. Uh, you know, w w it takes too long to open accounts mm -hmm. or to um, sell products. So we will speed up these uh, processes and simplify them and make them a lot easier uh, for customers. Um, uh, and that will give us the opportunity to serve better customers better, give them a better product mix, uh, a, a more suitable product set, um, uh, but uh, really just uh, get on the customer face foot and serve uh, more customers once again that will really help. So digitization and simplification is a, is a key part mm. of, uh, of what we need to do. Um, we're also um, looking at maintaining our branch um, presence around the place. We see our branches as a competitive advantage. We're here to serve um, uh, customers in places. We may serve them differently and we're looking to automate and straight through process. Um, but we're hoping to make sure that we have really good representation across Malta and Gozo mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that um, that provides the, the, the footfall and the um, customer access that we need uh, to grow. But I do see the strategy delivering far more um, uh, sustainability and certainty uh, of income once we're through uh, the current issues of the uh, two contingent cases. We've de-risked and we've stabilised the bank. So going forward, the strategy will deliver a much more stable level of return and hopefully lead us to uh, sustain a, a consistent level of dividends and, and returns for all of our, uh, our stakeholders.